Okay. Anyway, so let's just kind of go through this from yesterday. And we'll get through that, and that will form the basis of that that you're going to do today. So one of the difficult things that you're, you're dealing with electricity is that how do you determine what's positive or negative? Okay, and so eventually we'll go we'll go in the back and I'll show you one of the things you can do to sense that. And so even if you look at like the history of what's positive and what's negative, it actually goes back to Benjamin Franklin. And uh, he's the first one to really do any kind of quantitative study with electricity. Or BC is the one who takes credit for it. Why is he wrong? <laughs> well, no, but he's just the one that's most famous because he did the kite with the electricity or the, the, the lightning. Key. And Don't the you key. think a turkey would be a better natural huh? bird? Don't you think a turkey would be a better <laughs> No, let's not start down that road either. Wait, yeah. why? And so, <laughs> so what happened, and, and this will play out large later on, is that Franklin knew that electricity could move, and he had a 50 50 shot. He could guess that the positive charges could move, or he could guess that the, electric, the, that the negatively charged particles would move. Franklin chose wrong. Okay, he said it's the positive. He had a 50/50 shot. Okay, but at the time, this is in the 1700s, there was no knowledge of electrons, protons, neutrons, no atomic structure was known, nothing. He literally had a 50/50 shot. And he's a positive guy. And he chose wrong and said the positive charges move. We know that's not right, and eventually, once we get into circuits, every, every class fights me on this. They go, why do we keep drawing it like the positive charges are moving? Because that's how it's always been done, okay? And don't sit there and go, well, why don't we change it? Because we don't, okay? Just accept it. Just, uh, just accept it. So when we get into circuits, we're going to draw it like positive charges are moving. So... If you look on this first question, four lightweight spheres suspended by threads, ball has been touched by a plastic rod that is rubbed with wool. So then the whole key to this is that whether something is touched or whether something is just brought near. So if you look on this one, then you got balls B and C are attracted to A, da 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 da, goes through this whole sequence, okay? So here's the deal. So here's ball A, B, C, and D. So when you look at this, because of the fact that ball A has been touched by a plastic rod, has been rubbed with wool. So that plastic rod with balloon whatever, that's going to be negatively charged. So what would happen is that I'm going to take this balloon, for example, and I'm going to rub this balloon. Okay, so we're going to say that this is negatively charged. Mm -hmm. So this has an excess of electrons. So what's going to happen is that if I actually, if, and here's the difference, if I just bring this close to this sphere, it's a conducting sphere. So if this is negatively charged, what you will see is that this sphere will have an imbalance of charge. So if I bring this close, the chihuahuas on this side are going to run over to this side. And so if I just bring it near, okay, so I just bring it near. If I do this, this side of the sphere is going to become negatively charged, and this side of the sphere is going to become positively charged. Now, as soon as I take the balloon away, it reestablishes an equilibrium. But if I bring it here, this becomes positively charged, this becomes negatively charged but just temporarily. Now, here's the difference. If this is negatively charged, which it is, and it has excess electrons in it, and I actually touch it to the sphere, then those electrons, because there's excess chihuahuas here, are going to try and balance everything out. So if I actually touch it, then the whole sphere becomes negatively charged. Because those electrons are going to flow from here to try and balance that out. Okay? So this is why, as you start this, ball A is going to become negatively charged because of the fact that it's actually touched. Okay? It's actually touched. Now, 
Then, when the balls are brought close together without touching, the following observations are made. Balls B, C, and D are all attracted to A. Now, here's the difference, okay? So, this would be a situation like I'm going to charge this balloon, okay? So, this is now A. So, what that means is that... You got some pins. Okay. Thanks. Now, because that is now negatively charged, if I bring my hand close to it, this is what we talked about yesterday, you can conclude one of two things. My hand is actually neutral, but I'm inducing a small area of that which is positively charged because the electrons are moving away. Or my hand is actually positively charged. Okay? So when something is brought near and, you, and it's attracted to it, it can actually be neutral or it can have the opposite charge, okay? Because everything is made up of, of electrons and protons and neutrons, and those electrons move very, very easily. So when you look at this, this is why B, C, and D are all attracted to A, because of the fact that they're, they're either neutral or they're positively charged, either one. Then you get B and D have no effect on each other. So B and D, you touch those together, nothing happens. So what does that tell you about B and D? They're both neutral. They're both neutral. Okay? Then you're told that D is attracted to ball C. So what's the only way that you can conclude? Now, it just says it's attracted to. It doesn't give the charge. So what can you conclude about C then? It's positive or negative. No, no, no. If it was negatively charged, if it was negatively charged, it would repel from A. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It's gotta be C, C's positive. Yes. So C is a classic example that it's actually positively charged. So C is actually positively charged. Therefore, when I bring it close to A, it's attractive because it's actually oppositely charged. Okay? Take this one. C and B and C, or B and D are attracted to because they're neutral. So, sorry, could you go over how we know that A is neutral and C is positive? No, 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 no. A is negative because it was touched. Yes. Because it was physically laid, touched with that negatively charged particle. So that means those electrons are going to flow over here. I got it. Okay. So it starts, the whole premise of this is that A is negatively charged. Because it's touched to that negatively charged rod. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That, that whole thing starts with that. Now, so when you get to question number three, it says, can an insulator be charged? If so, how would you charge an insulator? So insulators, you have gen two broad classifications of material. You have conductors and you have insulators. So insulators themselves don't conduct electricity, okay? Which is why, for example, if you look at wiring, this is why we cut the outside of wires with plastic. So that, because it doesn't conduct electricity. So balloons aren't very good conductors of electricity. If they were, we could use balloons in wiring, okay? They're not, okay? They're made up of electrons, protons, and neutrons, but conductors basically, the short version is that conductors allow electrons to move freely, Insulators don't. But that doesn't mean I can't charge them. So if I can take this balloon, which in and of itself is a horrible conductor, but if I rub it with that balloon, this thing is going to become negative charge. So I can charge it. I can make it hold a charge. It's just not going to conduct that electricity through it. Wait, you said that insulators? Yes, yeah, so I can. So on 3A, where it says, can an insulator be charged? Okay, like this is a classic example of balloon. Rub it with a blanket, rub it with silk, wool, something like that. Okay? Then you got B, a different, uh, then can a conductor be charged? If so, how would you charge a conductor? Okay? So, like this metal sphere is a conductor. So, in this situation, what I would do is I would charge this balloon, and that's what I just showed you. If I charge this balloon, make it negatively charged. I touch that conducting sphere, then this is going to allow those electrons to flow over it. 
So a conductor, I can make that charged, take negatively charged balloons, physically touch it. Those electrons go, hey, look, 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 or look, whatever the situation may be. Look, hey, here's uncharted waters. We can distribute this over here and then get an equal balance. So this would lose charge and this would gain charge so that it becomes more evenly that distributed. That would be the same for positive as well? Yes. Wait, so... so Louis? Okay, uh, sorry. But uh, number A, you, that was no, right? They cannot have a charge. <laughs> yeah, that's three A is yes. Three that's, A. that's just every time I take this balloon, yeah. it's, the, no. the balloon itself is not a conductor. Okay. okay. Yeah, but if I rub it with a silk blanket, whatever, even my own hair. So okay. How would, okay. How would you, I guess, explain that broadly? How would you charge it in terms of the question? You would just say, how would you charge it? You would rub it with something else. Friction. Nice. With a, a you could rub it with a blanket. You could rub it with your hair. Something that it can take you, electrons or give electrons away to it. So on the conductor, though, on part B, that's when you would take something that is charged and touch it to it, and then those electrons are going to flow, flow over that surface. Now, let's talk about, and it's the same thing that's going to happen on number four. You take clothes out of the dryer right after it sobs, the clothes off and stick your hands and arms. Is your body charged? So is your, does your overall body as an entity have a charge? No. No. But the clothes are charged, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is that let's say your clothes come out of the dryer and they're negatively charged. It's going to stick to your hand. Why? Yeah, and so what's going to happen is that that region of your body is going to become charged. So just like I'm neutral, but if I take yonder balloon and yonder blanket, and yonder blanket does the does the okay. that in there and do this, okay? So it's like so if I put my head here, right? So it becomes attractive. Is my head positively charged overall? No. No, no yeah. overall I'm neutral. But if I do this, what's happening in, on my face, those electrons are moving away. Yeah. Positive charges are left behind. It becomes attractive to me. So if you surrounded yourself with negatively charged materials, would your whole body go positive? Hold on, say that again. So if you like wore a suit of like full negative material, would your body go positive? No, because your body as a whole is a horrible conductor of electricity. Isn't it water though? Huh? Isn't it water though? Only if it has ions in it. But in terms of like, but that would have to get through your cellular level. Uh, your cells themselves aren't very good conductors. Go yeah, on. once you get the to the 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 fluids inside of you, especially your blood, because that's containing charged ions, that conducts the pure water. Pure, pure, pure water is a horrible conductor of electricity. But if it has any ions in it at all, then it becomes a good conductor. Yes? Don't dryer sheets, like, make it less charged? Or it seems like it doesn't... That's, what, that's what they claim to do. Dryer sheets are, are, are an abomin... Are, are, or an abomination. Wait, so I hate dryer work? sheets. You think so? Oh, they're, they're horrible. They smell good, though. Okay, yeah. here's what you do. <laughs> they're bad for the environment. Yes. But it's on they, no, they are. They're horrible. Okay, really? okay. Really? here's what you do. Yeah. I didn't know that. Here's what you do. I can send you the link. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go to, it's a company called True Earth, okay, and they have wool dryer balls. Okay. And they're, you, you can use them again and again and again and again and again and again and again. again. Okay. How long, like forever? I, I've had the mine for probably two years. Oh, bad. Wait, I thought it... Wouldn't that make How it more staticky? Like, no, no, they're, 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 it's nothing. They're, it's, they're cheap. Does it smell good? Well, what I do, the like like laundry secret from you your, from your 56-year-old 56 56 bachelor <laughs> physics teacher is that I buy uh, through Amazon, it's like a concentrated like scent of like orange. And so you put that on there and then you throw that in the dryer. 
So that's how you get. And, and, and fabric softener also an abomination. Is it really? Fabric softener is an abomination. It's really bad for the environment. Yeah. Like, it's like filled with microplastics, basically. What is yes. Oh. Yes. Fabric softener? Fabric yeah. softener is horrible. I didn't know Stop. that. My family doesn't use those well, personally. Just, just use white vinegar. Yeah. About everything. Yeah. Humans. Well, we're the worst. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because we do everything else. Yeah. Okay. Back to our story. Now, let's talk about question five. Okay? <laughs> Anyway, that's biology. Okay, that's biology. No drip. Okay, so at number five, the positive charge on 25 is positive Q. What is the negative charge of the electric field of the dot is zero? Okay, so. Here's the story. This boils down to F equals K Q1 Q2 over, oh. over D squared. So if you look on this one, you have a negative Q here, okay? And then you have a positive Q here, and then you have the dot. So the positive charge is positive. What's the negative charge if the, if the electric field at dot is zero? So this is like a vector quantity. So you have two ways you can view this. One is forces, and the other one is F equals K Q1 over D squared, which is the value of your electric field. Electric fields are vector quantities, okay? Now, the whole key to this is that you're going to be dividing by d squared. So what's going to happen, and, 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 and I had to rush, rush through this yesterday, is that positive charges define, a positive test charge defines the, the direction of the electric field. So don't worry about the negative Q. Leave that out. Okay, just leave it out. Don't worry about it. If I put a positive test charge right here, and that has, this has a positive charge. I put a positive test charge here. This is creating the field that we're going to study. What would that positive test charge feel? A repulsion or an attraction? It would feel a repulsion. So the electric field from that positive Q is trying to push that positive test charge away, okay? Now, over here you have negative Q. You want the net effect of that, because that's a negative, so if I put a positive test charge here, and that's it, now, pretend that this Q isn't here. This is not here, don't worry about it, it's gone. If I put a positive test charge here, what's that going to feel? Attraction. An attractive force. Right? So that's going to feel attracted to this way. So I want these two to cancel out. Okay. Now, because I'm dividing by d squared, if, if that negative q was the same value as that positive q, if they were the same, it's huge if, if they were the same, would, what would it feel more from? That positive Q or that negative Q? Positive Q. It would feel more from the positive Q, okay? If the charges were the same, because this is a smaller distance. So this is a bigger distance. So what has to happen to that value of that charge? It has to be bigger. Now, if you just look at this, this is doubling the distance from here to here. So if you double the distance, ah, you have to have Four times. Four times the charge because you're doubling the distance. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, that was way harder than I thought that problem was. What? That was way harder. So basically it's <laughs> negative four? Yes. Q? Yes. That's interesting. Yep. It's negative four Q. Why? We just talked but like I know, but like if it's on the denominator, why would it be negative four? There's no need to Okay, hold on. So, this is the electric field generated from that positive Q. 
right? We're just going to call this D. So that's going to be KQ over D squared. I don't know the numbers. I don't care about the numbers. Why do we only have one Q? Okay. This, okay, positive Q. Whatever you No, I know, but like, why is there only one Q, but there's two Qs in the equation? We're looking for energy. No, no, no. We're looking for electric field, not force. Oh, okay. We're looking... I just said, here's the two equations. One's for force and one is for electric field. Okay? So, I can't calculate the force on this because I don't know what this charge is. Okay, all I know is that it's a point in space. So, the electric field generated from, at this point, from that, from that positive charge would just be KQ over D squared. Cool with that? Now, to make these equal, this distance from here to here is twice as much. So that's going to be 2d squared. So to get these the same, that charge has to be 4q. Oh, okay. Because that one's taking 4q and dividing it by 4d squared. Those will cancel out. The two fields are the same. Now, interesting thing happens. If this was a positive charge, is there any way at this point the net electric field could be zero if that was a positive charge? No. Mm -hmm. Couldn't happen. Why? There's nothing to cancel it out. Yeah, they're both pushing them in the same direction. So if if I'm a point over here, I and they're both positive, there's no way I can have an, a net electric field at zero. But an interesting thing happens. If these were both positive, let's say that they're both the exact same positive Q, positive Q. If I were a point in the middle, could I have no net electric field? Yeah. Yeah. Because it would be equal. It'd be right? pushing. It would be same. pushing in both directions. So if they're both the same charge, I can have a point in the middle where either they're both pushing in the same direction. Or if they were both negatively charged, they would both be pulling, pulling in the opposite direction. Now, but if they're if they're both if this is positive and that's negative, is there a point in the middle where there would be no net electric field? No. Why? Because if I if this is positive and that's negative, if I put any point in between, if I put a positive test charge here, it's always going to be pushed in that direction, and always going to be pulled in by the negative. So that's we'll, we'll do an entire lab on that. Okay, So that was just kind of the opening solvo to kind of get you thinking about that. So you have to look at are they both positive, are they both negative, or are they oppositely charged? Because that will determine what you can do with the electric field. Okay. Uh, on problem number two, the number of electrons that you needed to add uh, should be something times 10 to the 11th. On question number four, uh, that number of electrons should be something times 10 to the 10th. And on number six, if you're in nanocoulombs, it should be something between 70 and 90 nanocoulombs. So you said you talked about number six. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So on number six, let's talk about number six. Question, or Question number six. Problem number six. So here's what I want you to see as the difference on how this can happen with spheres. So you have two identical spheres, which I happen to have like this, okay? Now, you can do this one of two ways. They can either be near each other or they can be touching, and they play out completely differently. So if you look on number six, you have two identical spheres are in contact. Both are initially neutral, okay? Boom, I've discharged them, they're neutral, okay? They don't have any charge. So then... 1 times 10 to the 12th are added to sphere A, then the two spheres are separated. So here's what I want you to see. So what this would look like, 
Because these are touching, we're going to get these when they're actually touching. Like this. Okay? So, I'm going to charge this balloon. Now, these are touching. Okay? So, if these are touching, and I bring this balloon, and let's say it has, make the math easy, 40 extra electrons. Incredibly low number, let's just say it's 40. So if this has 40, actually let's make it 60. Let's make it 60. So if this has 60, I'm going to touch it to this, and then those electrons are going to spread out over both of them because they're touching. So when I take this and I touch this to this, these, those electrons are physically going to move from here to here. So then if I separate them, now these are both negatively charged, okay? Now here's the difference. If I do that same thing, so if they're touching, and I touch it with this, and I remove the balloon, they're both going to be negatively charged. Here's the difference, though. If I charge this again, okay, and they're touching, okay, and I bring the balloon near, I don't touch the balloon, I don't touch the balloon, I bring it here, then I separate, and then I take the balloon away. Then what would be the charge on each one? Oh. Negative and positive? That'd be negative and positive. Why? Because the other ones will become attracted. Fantastic. Yeah. So if this is negatively charged, okay, these are touching. These are touching. They're touching. I bring it near, but I don't touch it. So the electrons here scurry over here because they can't. The chihuahuas here are gone. We're out of here, right? Making the run to the border. They're gone, okay? I bring this there. The chihuahuas are out. They're gone. Okay? Now, if I just take this away and then separate them, then they're going to be back to being neutral. But if they are brought close together, and I bring this, this becomes positively charged. That one becomes negative. Then if I separate them, then they re this is how you can create oppositely charged spheres. So if you want oppositely charged spheres, you touch them together, you bring this near, you separate them, boom, they're oppositely charged. If you want identically charged, then you actually touch it, the electrons scamper, then you separate them, then they're both going to be negatively charged. Okay? So that's the difference on how you create oppositely or the same charged spheres whether or not you touch them, and the sequence in which you separate them, okay? So that's the whole key to that problem number six, is that both are initially neutral, one time symmetry are added to sphere A, then the two spheres are separated. So I'm going to put that, that number of electrons, so it's going to evenly distribute that number of electrons, you're going to separate them, and there you go. So, because of the fact that it wants the charge, okay, it wants the charge, so each one is going to have half the number of electrons, but since this wants the charge, then you have to have, take that number of electrons, and then use the fact that there's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs on each electron, and so that's how number six is going to play out. Okay? Marella. Can we look at question um, seven and eight? Yeah. Okay. So question? Yeah. Okay. So question seven, this is what shows a positively charged rod held near but not touching a neutral metal sphere. Add pluses or minuses. So what's going to happen on this one? How are we supposed to draw that, though? Like, is there a certain way we're supposed to do it? No. Or just, like, can I put negatives all on one side? So here's the rod. Okay, right? So does it experience a net force? Hold right? on, yes. just don't give me making this difficult. Don't. Slow down. Okay? So imagine this is positively charged. So the whole key to question number seven 
is that it's held near but not touching. It's yes. held close but not touching. So if, if this is positively charged and that balloon is neutral, I bring it here. What's the, what are the chihuahuas going to experience? What do they want to do? They're going to go to the farthest point. They want to move towards the... Oh, towards. Yeah. So this is going to have... Oh, it's positive. It's going to have more negative charges than positive. Mm -hmm. And then this side on the opposite side is going to have more... Positive than negative. Yeah. So... But it's metal. So it's like, can it really... So. It's the same idea. I mean, does it have a force though? Because is it is it moving? Don't 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 throw. Do not throw forces into this. That's what it asked though. Force. Hold on. Just in terms of. Here's the story. Let's just get through A first before we get to, this. Okay. okay. So, you you're gonna have these electrons that are gonna move, right? Okay. So start with that. Because if you can't answer, if you don't get that, you can't answer the net forces question. Okay, so you understand that that side of the balloon is going to be negatively charged, the other side is going to be positively charged. So then the question is, is it going to experience a net force? Well, yes, because of the fact that since you're going to have all those negatively charged particles here and those positively charged here, it's going to be, you're going to have a net force that's going to bring it towards that rod. But that's going to happen because you have an uneven distribution of the charges. Louis? When you say like that the electrons move just because they can, is that due to repulsion or is that just they're free? Well, they're somewhat free. They're, they're, they're bound up in a lattice, okay? Because the electrons still have, the electrons are, are these nebulous kind of like, the, the one analogy with electrons is that if you consider like a cantaloupe in the garden to be the, the nucleus, oh, mosquitoes or gnats swarming around it are like the electrons. Okay. okay. So whether some things are conducting or not is the ability of those mosquitoes to move from one cantaloupe to another. Okay. So because they're so loosely bound and they're not necessarily locked into fixed places like we tend to visualize them, so what happens is that these electrons can move, and when the electrons move, they actually induce an electric field. So even when you have like a current flowing through wires, the electrons themselves move, but the electrons themselves don't move as fast as the electric current. What actually makes the electric current move is the electric field generated by the moving electron. So when we talk about these electrons that are moving, those moving electrons generate an electric field, and that's, that field is what creates the repulsion and attraction. So the electrons are free to move somewhat, but they're still bound up with... So it's, it's, less, of the, um, it's less of the actual electrons moving, more of just the field being... Yes. And we'll talk more about that when we get into circles. Okay, so when you get to, hold on, let me, let me get down to number eight. So plastic balloon has been rubbed with a wool stick and it sticks to a wall. Can you conclude that the wall was charged? So if I do this, just like that's yesterday. It's not charged, no. I know. Because of the... You can induce a small area that has a charge. Moments. Huh? Dipole moments. Well, no, that has to do with it within a molecule itself. Oh, so that's not in there? Huh? So what is it called then? All you're doing is you have a small region that you have an induced positive or negative region, but a dipole So moment, just call it a reduced, induced, induced You're going to region. have an induced region of positive or negative charge. Okay. Okay, but it isn't a dipole moment. Dipole moments only apply to molecules. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they were talking about dipole stuff in here. But within the context of molecules. Uh, okay. That's okay. fine. Okay. Vitor, did you have a question? Okay. Anything else? There isn't like a specific amount of electrons and protons in the balloon, right? No, no, no. Draw. Okay. Yo, no, try and draw them all. You just here's <laughs> I just want you to show that hey and this and keep this in mind when you do the lab today. 
All I want you to realize is that even when you have more, you're just going to have slightly more negative charges. You're still going to have positive charges. You're just going to have slightly more negative charges. Same thing is going to be on this opposite side. Okay? You're just going to have slightly more positive charges than you do negative charges. Okay? All right. Got that idea. Yeah. Anything else? Going once, going twice. So. So. Okay, let me go get the sensor. That's going to be the Okay, so what this handy dandy little contraption is, is that an electric field sensor. So, we'll reset it. So, I'll take yonder balloon. Of this. So now, when you look at this, so it has a positive and negative side to it. So it actually shows some cool things. So notice, and, and the, the bigger that blue line is, the more negative it is. So when I bring this close, notice that as I take that away, what happens to the strength of that electric field? It decreases. But as I bring it closer, it becomes stronger. So, and this is going to be important in terms of the lab you're going to do today. So we need to have some benchmark that says, hey, what are we going to call positive? What are we going to call negative? So the balloon that you're going to use in the lab today, clearly that's going to have a negative charge. So, and this kind of works, but not quite as well. So I'm going to take this sphere, right? I'm going to hold this up on this side so the sphere itself is neutral. But when I bring this balloon near, notice what happens to this side of the sphere. It becomes negative. negatively charged. Why? Because they go away from the negative charge. Fantastic. So what's happening is that I'm bringing this close, right? So those electrons on this side are fleeing over here, so that's why that's picking that up as that negative charge. So it isn't the balloon itself that it's picking up. What it's picking up is the fact that this is a conducting sphere. So when that happens, those electrons are moving over here. So in the context of this lab, what we're going to do is we're going to oh, it's got stuck. so we're going to establish the balloon as being the matrix, and we're going to say, okay, this is our benchmark. We've just proved that when you charge a balloon, it has a negative charge. So this balloon has excess electrons. Okay, hold on to that thought. So let me hand out the lab. So here's what you want to do. So this is going to go through a lot of scotch tape. So hence the name of the lab. Yeah, that, that, one, that one took me a while. Okay, so you're just going to take the scotch tape, but about eight centimeters long. Don't sit there and measure this out. Oh, they have to be exactly it's about eight centimeters long, okay? And you're just going to take this like so. And this is easier when you have two people. And then like so. And then you're going to bring these together, and you're going to see if anything happens between them, okay? So you can go like this, bring them together, okay? And see what's happening, okay? Then you try them on this side. It's easier if you can have them on the sides that are gonna be. Charges! Charges! Charges, we don't need those stinking charges. Yes, we do. Okay, so this is just gonna be the first part. Now, you can take one piece when you get down to number two, take one piece, take fold the corners over to form a triangle at the top. So I'll take this. Uh, so we're going to use a square and and a triangle. So this is how we're going to tear. This is how we're going to tell the two apart. One's going to have a triangle folded over; the other one isn't. So put the piece on top of the other, attaching the sticky side of the triangle to the smooth side of the square. So now we're going to do this. Okay. So I'm going to put that down, put that over the top of it, like so, give that a 
then you take this, and this is the other advantage of having the triangle piece. And then you're going to take that, and you're going to pull that off. Oh, come on, I shouldn't have done it on my book. It's stuck too well. I think. This is why you're going to do it back there with the lab tables. Destruction of property. It's okay. You're going to pull that off. Pull that. And then you're going to see what's going to happen to them. Like I said, this is easier. Whoa. 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 Okay. It's magic. Wow. Magic. <laughs> Sorcery. Okay. Magic. So now, here's the whole idea. Is that what you're going to do, and here's, again, stay with me through the spirit of the slab. And so, on number four, it says, before they are pulled apart, and I, I ruined it because I pulled it, so pretend that you didn't see what just happened, okay? What happened? Predict what will happen when they are brought together after they have been pulled apart. Justify your answer. So pretend that what I just did, you never saw. Okay, I know that's tough, difficult to do, but pretend that that never happened. And then your justification. Then, on the diagram, so in that, this cross section, here's what I want you to have. On this cross section, imagine that you're looking at the edge of the tape. So if you want one side to be positive and the other side to be negative, and that's what I tell you. Here's the sticky side that's up on top. So if you think if you think the sticky side has slightly more negative charge than the bottom side does, then up there on that sticky side, here's what you have. Then obviously there's going to be positive and negative charges. So if you think the sticky side is more negative, okay, then you're going to have some positive charges. And then down here, you're going to have just a fewer number of negative charges. So if you think the sticky side is negative, put more electrons up there. If you think the bottom side is more negative, put neg more negative signs down there. You don't have to count them. You don't have to put like a thousand of them or something like that. But someone should be able to look at your diagram and go, oh, okay, hey, here's the positive, here's the negative side. Okay? Then you're going to pull them apart, bring the pieces of tape together, record the observations, and then what are the possible explanations for what you observed, okay? Then, use the diagram to indicate one of the explanations from above. So, when you get to number seven, basically, again, here was the spirit of how I wrote this lab, is that let's say, for example, you think before you actually did this, that you think the top sides are negatively charged and the bottom sides are positively charged. Cool. Then you see what happened. Then on number seven, basically, do you need to revise what you had? Now, when you get down to number eight, you're going to take them and you're going to move them towards your hand. This, ha this needs to happen pretty quickly because these tapes become neutral after a while. So then you're going to move each piece of tape and you're going to try and move that towards your hand okay and then you're going to see what's going to happen to each one does one repel does one attract do they both attract do they both repel do neither one of them do anything when you move it close to your hand so that needs to happen quickly if you think your pieces of tape have become neutral just redo the redo it and then do that part of it right away okay so don't be we got lots of tape okay so don't be afraid to do that again then, this is where you got to work with another group when you get down to number nine. Then you're going to take your triangle piece, Louis is going to take his triangle piece, and move that to Jackson's triangle piece and see what happens. And then you're going to do the same thing with the square pieces, okay? See what's going to happen there. Then you're going to have to have the balloon and the blanket. So again, this needs to happen pretty quickly. Rub the balloon with a blanket and bring each piece of tape near the balloon and record your observations. Remember, the balloon is negatively charged. Okay, we've established that. The balloon is a negative charge. So take the triangle piece, move it near the balloon. Take the square piece, move it towards the balloon. Good with that. Good with that. Now, when you get to number 12, 12 is a new start. Both pieces of tape on the table with the sticky side down and press them down 
before you pull them up, bring them, make a prediction about what's going to be observed and justify your prediction. So what's going to happen, and I'm not going to do this one. So you're going to take each piece of tape, and I'm just going to show you what you do. You're going to start over with new pieces of tape. These are not the same pieces of tape. Throw them away. And do not leave them back there. Okay, I'm not going to clean up after you. There's trash cans. Put them in the trash. So imagine that you have two new pieces of tape. You're going to put them down on the wooden table. And like so. So that's going to be like this. You're going to have both of them down like this. So the idea being, before you take them off, you're going to make a prediction about what's going to happen. Okay? Are they going to both be neutral? Or are they both going to be the same charge? They're both going to have opposite charges. That's what you're going to do. Then you're going to pull the pieces off, and then you're going to bring them close to each other, and then you're going to see what's going to happen. And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to bring those towards the groups of other groups, and you're going to see what's going to happen there. Okay? Now, there's no right or wrong answers. The whole idea being uh, the, why I wrote this lab is so that you can begin to see, wow, how this is the difficulty of measuring electrical charge. Because not only do you have to worry about what the tapes are doing, but then you're becoming part of the system as well. Because if you saw what I was trying to do, it was like, oh, you know, it's sticking to your hands. This is why this whole thing is easier to do as a group, because like Fish can do one, Sam can do the other one, and then you can bring them together and see what's going to happen. Okay, I'm doing right your own. So, stop.